Continuamos con esta serie de entrevistas en El Candidato Responde, una edición muy especial. Y por supuesto, aquí está Tony Méndez. Adelante, Tony. Gracias, sí, García. Y le damos la bienvenida a Nirva La Fortune. Ella es aspirante a alcaldesa de la ciudad de Providence. Bienvenida a Poder 102.1 FM. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Y también vamos a darle la bienvenida, si se acerca al micrófono, a Ismalen Reyes. Ella estará <laughs> interpretando al español las palabras de Nirva La Fortune. Gracias por participar. Muy, muchas gracias por tenerme. So, what have you learned that you didn't know about the issues affecting Latinos in this long race for Mayor of Providence? ¿Qué ha aprendido usted que desconocía antes de estos retos que confronta la comunidad hispana? Right. One of the, the issue that I'm learning more and more, and it's something that, you know, we've, the issue that I'm learning more and more and something that, you know, we're constantly seeing is access. You know, people have, the, a lot of people that I've speak, spoken to from the um, Latino, Latina, um, or Latinx community, that what they've shared is the lack of access. Because sometimes there might be some resources or initiative that m might be implemented, but they don't know how to access it. And so as mayor, I want to make sure that whatever we do as a, as a city, people are able to access it. And that's why part of my plan is also having one within our economic development office, having a, um, a business liaison connecting with businesses and ensuring that we have business liaisons who could speak Spanish um, amongst other languages. So we're connect, um, connecting um, to businesses throughout the city of Providence. Also have um, individuals, um, cons uh, like a constituent services um, individual representing every single neighborhood um, throughout the city of Providence. Uh, para ayudar a la comunidad latinx de la ciudad de Providence, um, quiero crear una comunidad donde una oficina que se puedan comunicar porque los latinos no saben cómo acceder a los recursos que ofrece la ciudad de Providence para ayudarlos. Y quiero crear una, una oficina donde los negocios también puedan ofrecer ayuda a la comunidad latina. Mm -hmm. So millions of dollars are coming to Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and in particular to Providence also, mm -hmm. for schools, infrastructure, and from the federal government. Mm -hmm. What is your vision of using these dollars in a fair way? Right. ¿Cuál es la visión que usted tiene mm -hmm. de estos millones de dólares? O sea, para la utilización de estos millones de dólares que van a venir a Rhode Island y particularmente a la ciudad de Providence por parte del gobierno federal. Right. So when we receive the American Rescue Plan Act funds, and you're right, additional funds are coming into the city, uh, the first set of funds, when they came in, the city council leadership decided that they weren't going to go to a, through a process, and they decided with the mayor's office how they're going to allocate those funds. Um, I found that to be problematic because we were not engaging with the community. That's why I passed legislation to create the task force in which I served on. It was one of the most community engagement process in the state. Um, Oscar Mija, he was um, the chair, and my and what I said, um, because when I was asked if I wanted to be the chair, I said absolutely not. The chair should the chairs should be people who are engaging with the community, and that's why it was Oscar Mija, also Angie and Coma Bannerman, who are the two chairs, and we worked with different groups throughout the city of Providence, um, and um, with also Latino groups, and it was the most community engaged process in the whole state of Rhode Island. More people in the community engaged than the state process. And, uh, you know, through that, um, they identified various areas to allocate funds, going into businesses, um, going into the communities, going into the rec centers, going into education. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, smiling. Para el dinero que vamos a recibir, quiero, la alcaldía decidió dónde se va a ir ese dinero y no estaba de acuerdo en cómo la decisión fue tomada, así que decidí crear un equipo de trabajo que vaya a enfocarse en la comunidad. Eh, yo no quise ser la líder, quería que fuera una persona que fuera parte de la comunidad, como Oscar. Oscar Mejía. Oscar, Oscar Mejía, mm -hmm. para que participe y sea una persona que está totalmente eh, con, con contacto con la comunidad. Nirva La Fortune, let's talk about the Providence Journal. Mm -hmm. Vamos a hablar del periódico local, el Providence Journal. Mm -hmm. Recientemente uh, usted hizo una declaración de que no está recibiendo el mismo trato de los medios de comunicación. So re recently, 
you said that you're not receiving the same equal treatment mm -hmm. as you're running for mayor. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened. Right. Dinos, ¿qué sucedió? Well, in regards to the Providence Journal, I and I'm a subscriber, so I get the journal at my house, and I was quite surprised when I opened the journal yesterday morning, and um, there were, you know, because there was a article that was on the three uh, mayoral candidates, and I was quite surprised that both of my male opponents um, had these profile pictures, these headshots, and then the picture of me was not becoming. Um, and it also perpetuated stereotypes, negative stereotypes of black women, women in general, women of color. Uh, el artículo de Providence Journal me sorprendió mucho. Yo soy suscriptora del periódico y vi que mis can eh, los candidatos que son mis oponentes tienen un perfil muy diferente al mío y como no le hizo justicia a mi foto a este, en el artículo y pienso que como persona de color no se me hizo... Uh, no se me trató de una manera adecuada, igual, equitativa que los otros candidatos. Right. You know, media plays a vital role in connecting people to information and also sharing a story and also framing people's opinions about an individual or something. And we have been going through years of where, you know, in the past we had a president who, um, who said some pretty disparaging things about uh, black people, people of color, immigrants, particularly immigrants from Latin American countries. And now you have our premier um, news publication in the state of Rhode Island during a historical race where this is an opportunity for us to elect the first woman, the first black um, woman, the first woman of Afro-Latina descent who was formerly undocumented and truly represents the diversity of our city. And this is an image that you choose our little girls are looking at this. Our immigrant families are looking at this. And, um, you know, they should have been fair in how that was um, displayed. Um, it was wrong. And um, and I hope they learned uh, from this incident as well. Los medios de comunicación juegan un papel fundamental en la campaña. Y de la manera en que se manejó esta publicación fue algo muy equivoco ya que niñas ven esta publicación, fui, me siento ofendida ya que hemos pasado por un proceso que tuvimos un presidente que ofendió a los inmigrantes, a las personas de color y se jugó de una manera que se, se sintió muy mal, que eh, espero que hayan aprendido de cómo ma manejaron esa situación. And as you talk to Latinos, mm -hmm. do you think they understood that what happened with the photo in the context of the history of the United States. Yeah. Y la pregunta que le quiero hacer es sobre la comunidad hispana y esto que sucedió con esa foto que fue publicada en el Providence Journal. Quizás muchos dicen muy mal intencionada la foto mm -hmm. porque perpetúa, como dijo usted, eh, estereotipos que han estado ahí por muchos años, pero entiende la comunidad hispana mm -hmm. esto que hizo el Providence Journal en el contexto histórico de los Estados Unidos. Well, so, you know, the history of the United States is quite complex and it's rooted in racism as well as sexism. Um, and, you know, for people who don't look like, uh, you know, uh, the European centric or a white male, <laughs> particularly in politics, you know, for many years, uh, people who look like me, people who look like you, people who look like various folks from the Latino community um, and black communities, indigenous communities have been shut out. And so there's already this perception of what politicians and leaders should look like. And when we think about those perceptions is always a white person. I mean, think about the perception of God, right? Or Jesus, right? When you see images of Jesus, it's always a white male, but yet in the Bible, it says Jesus's skin was the color of dirt um, or the earth, which means Jesus was a brown man, right? Um, and in terms of Latino, the beauty, beauty about, um, you know, Latin America is that people come in arrays of shades. You know, there are people from Latin America who are brown like me. There are people who are in Latin America who are light with green eyes like my son and my grandmother. Um, we are very diverse and we speak various languages. So it's really important for when we're dealing with the media for them to truly represent us and the diversity of who we are to show how we connect with people, how we um, represent our beautiful communities and not in a disparaging um, way because again 
you know, uh, and I'll let you finish smiling to, and I'll just tell the last part. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, la historia de los Estados Unidos es muy compleja, pero estamos creados por una comunidad muy mixta y también tenemos la mal percepción de que para los políticos tiene que ser una persona, un estereotipo como los europeos, una persona blanca, no como una persona de mi color o de tu color, que han sido marginadas y cada vez que intentan llegar al poder han sido uh, aisladas y no ganan. Entonces, esa percepción de los medios de comunicación que no permiten que las personas de color sean resaltadas también es una mala imagen. Además, la comunidad latina y en América Latina contamos con una diversidad enorme de colores y razas y eso es lo que no hace. Yeah. You know, uh, yesterday when I rolled out my educational plan, there were some kids who were playing, um, you know, in a schoolyard. We were right near there. And um, a kid, someone was standing there, and the kid said, I want to be president like her. I could never be the president of the United States because I wasn't born in this country. I'm an immigrant. But that child who was born here can one day be president. And as I was leaving, there were three little kids who came up to the gate and one little boy said, I'm Latino too. And a little girl said, I'm Latina. And this other little girl said, I'm black. And I said, and you all are beautiful and you all will be successful. You know, I'm, I'm tearing up. Every time I come here, you always make me say something that, you know, <laughs> gets me a little emotional. So for so long, we continue to see these disparaging images of people who look like us. And we wonder why our young people are afraid to, to, to dream big because the world tells them they're not enough. The world shows them images where they're killing one another or the traumas that they've experienced. And now our kids are seeing a woman a woman who has lived the challenges that so many of their family members have lived. And she's pursuing something that so, there are many who've said it is, you know, she's not viable or it's not attainable. And she's challenging that. This race is greater than me. What I want to do in addition to winning is change the perception of politics in the city of Providence and the state of Rhode Island. Ayer cuando estaba en la rueda de prensa para mi plan de educación, habían unos niños jugando en un área de juegos y uno me dijo, yo soy latino, otro me dijo, yo soy latina y yo soy morena y quiero ser presidente como ella. Una le comentó y ella dijo, todos son hermosos y pueden lograr hacer lo que quieran. Quiero como candidata hacer historia en la ciudad de Providence para que se entienda que la política puede cambiar, que la imagen política puede cambiar, que personas como nosotros pueden ganar para que así los jóvenes se motiven a seguir tratando de luchar por sus sueños porque tienen una mala percepción de que las personas de poder son las personas blancas, mm -hmm. no las personas como nosotros. Yeah. So, you know, I, I hope this encourages Um, our young people, our moms who are single moms, who are struggling, our immigrant community, our black community, our Latina, Latino community, again, to pursue things that sometimes they feel like it's not accessible. Because truth be told, um, you know, I dropped my daughter off at, in seventh grade today. And I remember starting seventh grade when I was in middle school, I was undocumented. I never dreamed that I would run for office. My daughter could dream of running for office or doing whatever she wants. I want everyone to feel that way. El día de hoy, uh, cuando llevé a mi hija al séptimo, uh, que empieza su séptimo grado el día de hoy, uh, nunca pensé que cuando yo estaba en séptimo, una persona inmigrante, indocumentada, podía llegar a donde yo estoy ahora mismo. Mi sueño es que mis hija y otros hijos de inmigrantes que han nacido aquí puedan llegar a una posición de poder. Porque si yo puedo, también ellos pueden. Is Providence ready to elect a woman as mayor? An Afro-Latina woman as mayor. Yeah. Está Providence mm -hmm. lista como ciudad para elegir a una mujer como alcaldesa. Porque nunca se ha hecho. We haven't done so in the past. Right. Um, the time is now. This is the reality. We've been having some difficult conversations in the city of Providence. We have a mayor who's been talking about reparations and investing in communities of color. 
Um, we, we've seen a push for more representation across the board. Um, we're seeing women who are fighting and advocating for them to have, ac to have laws that protect their access to their own reproductive organs. Um, I've been a part of those conversations. I've been a part of those fights. You know, we have children who are demanding um, better quality education and to ensure that they have the mental and behavioral health supports that they need. Again, I've been a part of those efforts um, and have also led efforts in the city at, at the city council level to try to address these challenges. The reality is, is that we can't we can't continue to talk about equity or um, narrowing the, the the gap if we can't use what the power that we have, which is the power to vote. Con el poder de votar en la ciudad de Providence, tiene la oportunidad de hacer historia y elegir a una mujer, porque tenemos mujeres poderosas, empoderadas, que se están haciendo su, abocando por ellas para que puedan mandar en su propio cuerpo. Tenemos la juventud que está también peleando su propia educación. También estamos, yo he sido parte de todas estas conversaciones y como mujer pienso hacer historia en la ciudad de Providence. So I'll just end and say really quickly is that, you know, I'm ready. Right. And it's taken me a long time to get here because, again, because of our society, you doubt yourself. I'm ready to serve and I hope people can join me um, and to go to votenirva.com to learn more. But on September 13th, I hope people can join me to say we want to see change. We want a leader who's going to truly represent our city for our future by voting Nirva. Yo estoy lista. Y quiero que la comunidad de Providence vaya a votar el 13 de septiembre y hagamos historia porque así podemos ver los cambios que voy a hacer en la ciudad de Providence. Se nos acabó el tiempo. We ran out of time. How can people get in touch with your campaign? ¿Cómo puede la gente ponerse en contacto con su campaña? So you can get in contact with my campaign by going to votenirva.com to sign up to volunteer. You can send us in, um, an email at info at electnirva.com. We need all the help that we can get. We're knocking on doors. But join this movement because we're going to change the history of politics in the city of Providence and make history to elect the first woman, the first black woman of Afro-Latina descent to truly represent our beautiful city and to move it forward into the future it deserves. Nirva La Fortune, ella quiere ser la próxima alcaldesa de la ciudad de Providence. Esta es la serie de entrevistas. El candidato responde, usted tiene tiempo de votar todavía. Son 21 días de elecciones primarias en el estado de Rhode Island que comenzaron el 24 de agosto y el último día es el martes 13 de septiembre. Asegúrase de ir a votar. Mantenga la sintonía con Poder 102.1 FM. No se despeguen.